Hello and welcome to the third video in my Java programming series. Now in this video I'm going to be adding on to some of the stuff I did with variables in the last video and I am going to be talking about basic operations like plus, minus, subtraction, division, uh, exponential, all of that fun stuff. So without further ado, let's get started. Now what I'm first going to do is just talk about another way that we can create variables in Java. So earlier you, sh you saw me do something like this, int x equals 6, okay? This is fine, this works, we already know this, but there's another way that we can actually create this variable. And to do that, we can actually omit this equals six. So if we do this and we just say int x, what happens now is we've declared that x is a variable, uh, it exists, but we've not given it a value. So we've declared it, but we have not initialized it. I'll show you what I mean by this by just doing system.out.println, and we're simply going to print x, and just see what we get. Oh, I probably help if I spelt print correctly. Okay. Wow, I really messed that one up. Print ln. Okay. Run this. And you can see we are already warned that there is an error, so we'll proceed. But and it says the local variable x may not have been initialized. So before we can actually use the variable x when we set it up like this, we have to initialize it. Now to do that, any line underneath this declaration, we can just say x is equal to and then whatever value we want it to be, as long as it's an integer value. So in this case, I'm going to say x equals six. And now if we run the program, everything works fine and we get six. Now, obviously we can do this with every data type. So if I do like char and char x, right? And that's fine. And I say char x equals single quotation marks f like that. Okay. Then we can print that out and that will work fine. Now, what I want to talk about now is operations. So I am going to create a few variables. I'm going to say integer x equals five. Uh, don't forget your semicolon. Integer y equals seven. And I'll say int z is equal to 56. Okay. And I'll create one more variable and this is where we're going to start talking. So what I want to do now is I want to sum all of these variables. So 56, seven, and five. But I don't want to write like, 56 plus 7 plus 5 okay because yeah that's the value of these variables this works fine but what if i were to change this variable y well that means i have to go down here and i have to change this as well to whatever i changed y to what if i want to change x and y well that means i have to change both of these so there's a really cool thing that we can do and we can just use the variable names and just add them up so we can say x plus y plus z like this okay and now our variable sum stores the value of the sum of these three variables. And to prove it to you, I will print it to the screen. And you can see that we get 68 as our sum. Now, furthermore, if we wanted to take the difference of all these and subtract them, all we have to do is simply uh, replace this with a minus sign and we get negative 58, okay? Now to multiply things, this is another operator, we can do multiplication like this. And I'll replace this one with multiplication and we'll multiply all these out together. You can see we get uh, 1960 as our value. To divide, we can use the uh, forward slash. Now I'm not gonna do that right now because that is kind of a different topic. Like there's a weird thing with division I have to talk about, but that's how you do that. So those are four basic operators. Now these work just like they work in math in terms of order of operations, right? So we're going to start off with exponents and then go bracket or brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, um, and so on through the uh, process. Okay. I, I assume you guys know order of operations. So that means if I do something like X times Y minus Z, what's first going to operate is X multiplied by Y. And then we are going to subtract Z from whatever this value is. Now, again, if I switch this and I go like Y multiplied by Z, What's going to happen first is y multiplied by z, and then the subtraction is going to happen. Now, for example, if we have um, the operators that have the same precedence or the same, I don't know, like order of operation level, I don't know what to call it, um, it's just going to order it, uh, operate from left to right. So it's going to do x multiplied by y multiplied by z. So this is a common occurrence. A lot of people don't understand this. <laughs> uh, if we do a division sign, we're first going to multiply x times y, and then we're going to divide by z afterwards, okay? So that's how that works. Now, when we're, whenever we're doing operations like this, we can also add brackets in. So if I wanted to, for example, uh, say X multiplied by Y and then divided by Z, I could do something like this by throwing brackets in here. So now it's showing 100% 
that we are going to multiply this before we divide. And same thing if I did this, now whatever's in the brackets is gonna happen first, and then I can divide by said. And obviously we can embed more brackets in here, so I can say like multiplied by uh, y times y, okay? Like get out as many brackets and layers as you want, and that's totally acceptable and that totally works, okay? So now we are going to talk about division more specifically and then go into a few more operators because division works a little bit different uh, in Java, I guess it just in general, okay? So if I want to divide 56 by 7, so I want to divide Z by Y, okay? And I sum, let's just do uh, U, okay? We're going to call this U. And I print this out to the screen. 56 divided by 7 gives me a value of 8. That is because our data type for the variable u, which is holding the value of z and y, or z divided by y, is an integer. So it actually isn't able to give us a floating point number, although we know that this number is a floating point number. Or is it? Oh, let's see. Let's make sure this is, uh, I'm not messing up, 57 divided by this, okay? Yeah, so it can't give us a floating point number because this is well an int data type so it assumes we want an integer in return so therefore it's just going to give us the value and terminate all the decimals okay so say this number is like eight point something just gives us eight right removes the remainder now if i want to get decimal points which you will want to do most of the time uh, i could try to do something like this okay double of u equals z divided by y and you mean okay that makes sense double like it's going to give us the floating point but watch what happens if I run this, we just get 8.0. Well, we know that 57 divided by 7 is not 8.0. It has some decimal component to it that I couldn't tell you right now. Um, but why aren't we getting that? Well, that is because the two data types that we are dividing are both integers, which means when we get a value back from this, it's going to be an integer value. And then all we do is convert it into a double because we have this double here, okay? Just by adding that dot zero. So how can we ensure that we get a floating point? Well, there's two things we could do. We could first change the bottom to be a double, and we could change the top to be a double. So I could do like this, okay? Like it's like double, and could change this to be a double, all right? And if we have both of these double, and we try this now, you can see that we get our uh, decimal point, okay? And it shows up and gives us like whatever that is. Now, what if I just make one of these? So I say int y, and this is double. Let's try this now. You can see we still get our floating point. That is because if one of the values that we're dividing here is a double, it's going to automatically make the whole thing a double. So if one of them is a double, everything becomes a double. And this is the way it works for all of the operations. So if you have double u, and in this case we say like x times y, uh, or let's say x times z, since z is a double, x is not, we're still going to get a double value. So if we run this, you can see that we get this little point O. So if one of our operands is a double, then that means everything is going to be a double when we use it or whatever. Okay. Now exponent, uh, the way that we can do exponent is we have to bring in module, I believe, um, but it's like math dot pow. And then in here you put the, uh, what do you call it? The base and the ex the exponent. There's not a uh, star star like in most languages okay i'm gonna say int of d is equal to math.pow and here i'm simply going to raise x to the power y all right so we get math.pow let's see what is this saying convert to, okay so let's do this int 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 uh, hmm, cannot convert form double to form int interesting why it's telling me that let's just try this maybe there we go. Okay, so whenever we get x uh, x exponents, apparently they have to be in the form double. Okay, didn't know that, but all right. Uh, so now if I want to print out d, what's going to happen is we get the exponent for this. Okay, so math.pow, this is your base, and this is what you're raising the exponent to. So 5 to the 7 apparently is equal to that. Okay, so that is pretty much it for operators, I guess. Um, obviously, you can have as many operators in one line as you want. You now understand how things work in terms of doubles and ints. So if one of the operators in the whole chain of operators that you, or operators, variables that you're adding, subtracting, dividing, whatever, is a double, then that means you're going to get a double value back for 100%. If all of them are integers, that means you're going to get an integer value back. Now, same thing here. So I have, let's change y 
back to double and let's change u to be int okay so it says int u x times z so now ah, it's x times z, x times y okay so now you can see we're getting an error here cannot convert from double to int and that is because we're trying to say that the integer u is equal to x times y but y is a double value so when we get a value back here it's going to be double so we can't convert that into an integer just by doing this and there's another way that we can do it that i'm going to show you in a second okay so we would have to make sure that this stays as double and it's nice in this ide it tells you when you made a mistake like that because a lot of times you might not really see that in your program okay now i'm quickly going to go over something called typecasting um we're going to talk about this a lot more later but i'm just going to show you like fairly quickly how this works i'm just going to delete this line and we're going to turn these back into integers Okay, so if I want to do something like uh, x divided by y, okay, and I want to make sure that I'm getting that value, uh, uh, the decimal point value, okay, like so a double, rather than converting these, like the declaration of our variable to a double, something we can do called typecasting. And to typecast, we are changing in line without changing the declaration, the type of the variable. The way to do this is to simply put in brackets the type that you want to convert your variable into and then directly afterwards is the variable you want to convert so in this case it's double and then we have y okay so if i run this now and i print u instead of d you can see that we get the decimal value that we are looking for if i remove this double right then we do not get that or we do just because it says double but you guys see the point okay so anyways, I think that is going to be it for this video. In the next video, what are we going to be covering? I've got to look at my guide here. We're going to be talking about input and output. So how can we actually get input from the user in the console and then doing things based on that input, printing them to the screen, adding, subtracting, whatever. Okay. So if you guys enjoyed the video, as always, please make sure you leave a like and I will see you again in the next one.